We need to get a stained glass window in here. We need to get this window sorted out. So we're going to do that before we do the rest of the stuff. Here, you're lined up kind of with the bottom there. And you're lined up halfway through the top one. I also want to see these over here, back here. It's quite empty in there. They're there, but you can't see them. So we're going to be moving these around. So now I've come over, that's like 400. So I'm just going to click here, 400. And this one here, we're just going to move this 400. All right. So we got this. Just turn these off. And I'm going to select the walls themselves. And I'm going to put an edit poly on top of them. And I'm going to come into vertex mode. And I'm just going to be moving this stuff around. So that's going to be about there. And this one here is going to be about here, I think, wouldn't we say? Yeah, well, a bit under halfway through the top one. I'm not too worried about this. I can fix this afterwards. But I'm a bit annoyed it's there. It shouldn't be there. There's no reason for it. But what you can do, see, I can just come here onto polygon mode, press control and control A, and retriangulate, and it should fix it. But there's no reason for it to be there in the first place. That's what annoys me. Come down here, Control-A, retriangulate, and that should fix it. If it doesn't, there's other ways of fixing it, but that should be fine. And retriangulate just says, look, you've pulled verts, and the polygons don't know what they're doing anymore, so it'll just rework out what the polygons are doing and say, okay, good, this is where these, these verts are, and this it'll make the polygons flat again. Okay. And let's just look at the width. So I want to kind of bring this in. So again, we're going to... No, oh, I better select both of them again. Control. There we go. And here, go top view, F3. And I'm just going to select them like this. And I'm just going to press R and just scale these in a bit just so they come to where I want them to be, which is about there. So I think that's good. And then what we want to do is I'm just going to come to this edit poly and just click edges. And I'm going to use this to create the frame. I can then come create shape and it'll be a linear shape. I say okay. I want that shape selected, not the walls. Alright, so we've created this spline from the edge. So I'm just going to turn on rendering. Let's see what's going on here. Rectangular. And we just want this to be, I'm not sure, let's try 100 by 100. And this is going to be into the room a bit because I chose the inside edge. So we can drag this back into the window. And then let me go front view. Now, bear in mind, you can see the window edge here. And you can see this is there. So even though I've said it's 100, it's actually only 50. But it is 100 deep. So it's 10 centimeters deep, which is probably too much. So we're going to come back to 70. Then I'm going to put an edit poly on. Let me go into uh, edge mode. Just select across just do connect and then just drag this up and what i'm trying to do here is just create this bar here but i'm not going to make it as thick as that i mean that it is that thick because these ones open and chances are this one opens and these are separate windows and we can get into all of that but i'm not going to bother at this point so let's try 25 oh yeah there you go and then we're going to go polygon mode and just select this one and select this one and just bridge those across. And again, I'm not too bothered if it is correct or not because I can always fix it later. So on edge mode again, select these, just click connect. And then on these, we're going to then chamfer them. And that same amount is good. Good for me anyway. Good for what I want to do. Polygon mode. And we're going to select this one. And select this one, and we're going to bridge these. All right, that gives me my windows. And the rest of it, like you can add in detail, you can chamfer and everything else. It's at the back of the render, and I'm going to have other stuff going on here. So, you know, I'm not going to add in a ton of detail where I don't think it's going to be seen. Like, this is going to be seen, this is going to be seen, this is going to be seen, but not that much. Uh, we're going to need some plain glass windows in here. So... 
I've not really looked at this. Let's just see if I type in glass, what do I get? Glass window. 368. Wow, look at that. I'm not going to put that in there. Could do something like this. But scissors, really? <laughs> Dressing scissors and a syringe. I guess it's a syringe, is it? Oh, well, okay, there's a load of them. And that fork for eating. Uh, let's try and find something else. Here we go, we'll take this. We'll use this one. Just going to cut that. I'm just going to put it in here. And what we're going to do is just take this and just clone this, make a copy. This can be the window, I mean the glass. And delete that edit poly, turn off this, and just put an edit poly on top. And get the material editor, the V ray material. And we're going to assign this, put that in there. And let's just for mapping purposes, we're going to put this in diffuse to start with. And let's see what that looks like. Add a poly, let's put a UV map on here. There we go. It's F3, W. So we're probably going to have to edit this image slightly. I'm just thinking of the best way of doing it. Let's do open with Adobe Photoshop. Okay. So I'm going to go like that. M. I'm just going to select this area here. And do Control J. And then just move that over. Like that. I just want this to appear to be lead between here. As well as the lead there. I don't want it to appear to be bars. So we're going to do a new layer here. Layer, new fill layer, solid color. And we're going to make this black. And let's unlock this. Push this above. So basically now I've got this. I can just go M. Just, just do Alt. There we go. That's masked. If I do Alt and click on the mask, it'll mask it off. Make sure you have marquee selected. And I'm just going to highlight this. I'm just going to get rid of that at the top there. Like that. And then just do Control J. Does that work? No, it only does part of it. Control Z. I'm just going to. I like that mask. I'm going uh, to merge these two together. Control E. And then click on there to mask that. I'll, sometimes I'll put one of these in if I've got a mask and I don't want to lose it and I want to do something else. You know, just any layer. It can be anything. I'm going to press Control J. And then I want to move this up. Like that. And then I'm going to come back here again. And I'm going to press mark, go back to Marquee Tool. And just like this. And Control J again. Okay, so then I'm just going to press V and just move this up. Now if I put that above this one. Okay. I'm hoping that's pretty good. Again, I press Alt and put a mask on, and that will cover that area up. Okay, and we're just going to save this out. File, save as. I'm just going to call it no... Order. And let's try this again. You know, it might not work because of this middle bit here, but I just want to kind of check it. And I can hope if I come here, click apply view image, I can bring this down like this.
Maybe have a tiny border. I'd like to have a tiny touch of black at the top there. Okay, so we're going to edit this slightly, but what we're going to do is I press F3. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to come here. I'm going to, go to, I'm going to go to edge mode. Select these two edges. Just connect that. Drag it up to the middle here. And then I'm going to come into polygon mode. Press here. Press F3. Press F2 so I can see that. Get this UVW map. Press 1. And just lift, pull this up. I want that in the middle there. And then put an edit poly. Go polygon mode. Select this. Paste. Press 1 and bring that down. And I'm going to press R just to scale it slightly. I'm just going to scale up and down slightly. Okay. That's good. So I'm happy with that. So now we've got the mapping done. What I'm going to do is we can leave that in diffuse. What I really want it in is I want it in refract. And that's about it. And bump, let's put it on bump. And the reason I want it in bump, and I'll leave I'll set bump to like ten. And I'm not gonna take the blur down on this because I don't want these bumps to be sharp. But the reason for it is simply because, you know, there's a lot of lead going on here in light. And you could probably invert that actually to make it more realistic. So let's just get an output map. And I'm just going to put that into the bump and then double click on this, click on output and just click on invert. All right, that's good. I'm happy with that. So that's my bump done. Uh, let's do reflection and it's glass. Glass is normally quite reflective and glossiness is relatively high. I'm going to drop this down slightly. Let's put this at 0.9. I think that's pretty good. We've got colors. So now if I come out of, if I come back into here, Put an edit poly on top just to get rid of that oddity. I can press M and just bring this in, just click on here and make it so it's visible. And you're not actually going to see it because of the reflection, refraction, sorry. It's going to feel all kind of weird so it won't know what's going on. So now, this is a previous render. I'm just going to do a region here in the middle and then we'll have a look and see what happens overall. And let's do that. And I'm going to turn off displacement again because I don't want to be waiting for that displacement to, to render out. So we're just going to come in, V-Ray, displacement off, render. That looks pretty nice. Wow, I didn't actually expect it to come out so well in the first go. Because the sky is very blue, it's affecting this and making this very blue. So I'm just going to stop this. Let's turn this off the whole thing okay now what we have here is this is blocking light that's coming into the scene so we're going to take this you see how there's no light coming through this window or very little light coming through this window right click v-ray properties and then here i've got visible to gi i just unclick that i click press close and now it won't affect the gi so now if i render you'll still get this beautiful blue light coming in and the light coming in and hitting these different areas that it's been hitting. So now it's not preventing that light from coming through the window. And it's a good idea to do that to speed up your renders. Now one other thing which I forgot about earlier when I was talking about lights, on this HDRI, um, check, take these subdivs and I found that if you push this up, so you can push this up to 32, you should have less noise being generated by the HDRI. Sometimes you can end up with a lot of noise from an HDRI. And the reason as far as I can tell, maybe someone from V-Ray can tell me I'm incorrect, but as far as I can tell, the reason for that is not because the subdivs aren't adaptive, because they are. So that set to 8 and that set to 32 shouldn't make a difference. The reason it seems to make a difference is, like I say, not because of the light itself. Because when you look in here, when you come to the HDRI, this is a map. And so this is what's causing the uh, the noise in the scene and so how do you set the subdivs on this and the way one of the ways to do that is to adjust it here and that will increase the subdivs that this map is looking at in the scene because this isn't a light so it's not adaptive in the light it's not a material it's not adaptive in the material it's a v-ray hdri so 
that's a way that you can force this to have more subdivs in the scene, so reduce the noise from the HDRI. So I think that's looking pretty nice. If we put back on, um, if we put back on the displacement, and then render this out, yeah, I think we're starting to get there. Now what I am going to do though is there's a lot of color here, and I want to reduce that color. So let's have a look here. And we're going to just change this. So just right click, change material map type, and we're going to use color correction. Keep as a subdivision object. Double click on this one and just bring down the saturation. So we're going to try it down at 33%. Okay, that's too desaturated. I do want some saturation in there, so maybe try here. Sometimes a tiny amount does a lot, and sometimes a lot does hardly anything. So just practice. Okay, I think that's good. All right, there we have it. That's a stained glass window.